Welcome to Twisted Liquid RC Boats. Good day everybody and welcome back to Twisted Liquid RC Boats and the continuation in our Zip Kits SLR Missile Thunderboat build. Today guys we're going to review the rigging of our boat on the inside. And we are going to cover a lot of ground in this manual and we are going to review many steps in this manual which I already have done and I'm going to review with you in one video to show you all the rigging work that you should do before you do install your decks on your Zipkits SLR missile. The reason you should do all your rigging work first is it gives you a lot of room to access all the stuff you need to to build the boat before the decks are put on. You could build this boat and put the decks on it and then do the rigging but it will be a little harder because you will not have as much room to work. Guys, I've got a lot of this boat done inside and before I show you all the work that I do have done I want you to keep one thing in mind for me please. This is mock-up. I still have some parts and pieces to pick up in order to finish my rigging on the inside of this boat. But I am that far along enough with the work that I can give you an overall view of what we have done and show you the work we have accomplished. We are getting closer every day to making this boat a working, running, complete boat. And every little step I get done is one less step that I have to do in the build of this boat. Before I show you any of the work on the inside of this boat, there's one thing and one little philosophy that I build by when I'm doing radio control boat builds and I'm working on something like this. And the philosophy that I use while I'm doing it is less is more. And what I mean by that is less clutter means more tidiness. And if you can build your boat with less clutter on the inside, when someone do lift the lid off this boat and look down inside it, it looks more neat and tidy. So guys, I'm going to reposition the camera and we're going to review a ton of rigging work that is done on this boat. Basically, the parts that we are waiting for to come in the mail right now are the two brass tubes that we need in order to do the stuffing tube in the bottom of the boat. Besides that, we need to get a cable and a drive dock and we have enough parts to run this boat with just a few pieces of brass tubing and tie-gone for our fuel tank. We do need to get an aluminum tube for our exhaust extension out the tail of the boat and I have a piece of silicone hose there now just as a mock-up. So as I show you all this guys remember this is mock-up and there is going to be the proper parts put into this boat to finish it. But I just wanted to show you where we're to with the build of this boat because every day, like I say, we are getting closer to making this a working model. So I'm going to take my time, reposition the camera for you guys, and we're going to review the build of our Zipkits SLR missile on the inside and our rigging work in this episode. Okay guys, if you were with us for our last episode, you've seen how we fit our deck lid to the hull of our boat. Since we've done our deck lid, we have took the time to install a 3 16th wooden dowel in the front nose cowl former. We have took the time to run some nice fillets on the inside edge only, not the back edge, of both sides of the lid in order to strengthen the wood to the lid itself. We have also took the time to give these pieces one coat of West Systems to make sure that they are good and sealed before we use our boat. Guys, inside a couple episodes ago, you seen how we mounted our engine using gizmo mounts. And I've always wanted to run this boat as a stock engine with just the zip kits pipe. I did not want any modified engine in this boat. I'm very curious to see what I can achieve with this machine with just a stock engine in it. Because of that, I'm running a 644 Walbro carb on this engine. 
And Zip Kits recommends that you use a 257 Walboro race carb when you build this boat. The reason that Zip Kits would like you to use a 257 Walboro carb is that it is shorter and it will fit under this deck support very easy, this top deck support. Because I'm running the stock Walboro carb, which is different, I had to put this tiny little notch in my top deck support right here to make the carburetor and the insulator fit the engine perfectly. It's not a big deal and I still have lots of material left here for holding my decks when I do put it in place and I just cleared it out, clearanced it out enough to get enough clearance to make everything fit. This is not going to be an issue at all and I will still have my primer bulb and I will still have my choke and my stock carb set up on my engine. Guys, I have a 16 ounce Sullivan fuel tank put down in this little tiny compartment right here. I have to get to my local hobby shop, pick up some Tigon tubing for it, and I have to get some brass tubing for it. The brass tubing was missing out of the fuel tank package when I had it here sitting in my parts inventory. When I do get the chance to do that, we're going to mount the tank here with either Velcro or two-sided tape, we're going to use some foam to cushion it to prevent it from moving in any way in this little compartment and we will have a short direct shot to our carburetor very short fuel lines indeed we have our engine positioned perfectly we have our quarter dowel in place like I said to you we are waiting for our brass tubes to come in order to do the stuffing tube in our boat we have our exhaust mocked in place we do have to get it to a specific length and that is a process that we need to finish and is not done yet but we have everything sitting basically where it's going to go this is a good review of what i got done with the engine i'm going to reposition the camera and i'm going to show you guys a little more of the rigging work that we do have done inside this boat okay guys let's review how we have our radio box assembled and mocked up to run in our boat. From day one when I started building this boat I planned on using a bonsai throttle cable on it and not a mechanical linkage like they recommend for this boat. I filled the holes that were in the bottom of the radio box on this side and I re-drilled and repositioned my holes for my throttle servo on the other side of the radio box. I proceeded to drill a hole in the front and hook up my throttle cable to my engine and got it working perfectly. I have my SR6000T Spectrum receiver mounted down in the bottom of the box right here. I have it just held in with two-sided tape. I have my Spectrum switch mounted on this side of the radio box right here. I have my steering servo mounted in its large scale aluminum mount on this side where it is supposed to be and I have it hooked up with a ball end on the end of the control arm for a perfect fit. Guys I'm going to show you the carbon fiber rudder tube that I made in order to get the rudder linkage hooked up shortly. I still have to get a battery for this radio box. And right at the moment for mock-up and for just testing, I went and picked up four AA batteries, put them in a dry cell holder, which I had here, and got everything working perfectly in this radio box and hooked up. You see me build this radio box in an episode before, guys, and I went over the basic construction of it. Before I done any sealing on the box, I sealed all of the inside edges with Bob Smith industries 30 minute slow cure epoxy then i went in and gave this radio box three coats of west systems inside and out in order to seal it really good so none of the wood will rot and it should make it a water resistant radio box i installed a little aluminum nut to hold my antenna before we leave today's episode i'll turn on the radio system and I'll show you the brain of our boat working properly before we go today. Guys, I wanted to quickly review the bonsai throttle cable that I have hooked up on this boat. 
The reason I like these cables so much is they are a very simple hookup to a Zenoa and their standoff arm makes it a very neat, smooth working cable that works perfectly. I've been using these cables for over 10 years and I have them on all of my boats. Not just this one, all of them. And I find that it's a great working system. It's the main reason I moved the servo over right from the start when I started building this boat. Guys, it simply attaches here with a clamp and a three millimeter bolt right here that threads into the cylinder head. It clamps Tigon around a cable hold, the cable tubing, and the cable goes completely to your standoff arm and mounts on a nice angle. This is a super smooth, super good working system. It's inexpensive, it's neat, it's tidy, and it's the way I run all the throttles on all of my boats. Okay guys, let's review how Zipkits wants you to build the rudder control arm for your Zipkits SLR missile in the manual. I purchased some carbon fiber tubing that is approximately a quarter inch diameter on the inside. I picked up two 440 rods at my local hobby shop. They say to use one rod in the manual and cut it so there's seven inches length on one and five inches length on the other. And I started to build this rod by doing one side at a time and then doing the other. I cut my rod to verse one to length and got five inches of 440 rod threaded end to go to my rudder servo in my radio box. That merely threaded into my 440 ball link that I had attached to my rudder arm. I then came out and proceeded to sand two quarter wooden dowels approximately one inch in length right here and right here that would fit into the tube with the 440 rod in a groove on the side. I mixed up a good batch of epoxy and what I done was I done one end at a time. I done the radio box end first with a five inch piece glued in. I let it harden and cure and then I came down to the transom side and I put in a full length of 440 rod the same way with a one inch wooden dowel and a groove in it so that it would fit into the tube with the 440 rod. Guys, before I did put the rod in, I bent it at a 90 degree angle so that it's perfectly behind the wooden dowel on both ends. This is the way the manual recommends you should build this rudder control arm in the boat. I still have to get a rubber boot for my radio box and I'm probably going to put one on my transom also. I haven't really decided yet. Guys, I got my rudder working perfectly and this rod ended up working out to 15 and a half inches long of carbon fiber tubing. I did not find a measurement in the manual anywhere telling me how long to cut a carbon fiber rod and I basically had to determine it on my own. So if you want to use approximate measurement if you do build this boat 15 and a half inches you'll have exactly the right amount of travel here at your rudder servo and your radio box and you'll have lots of room here for travel at your transom also with two of your 440 rods. So this is how you would make your rudder control arm for your zip kits SLR missile. So I'm going to reposition the camera and we're going to work our way back to the transom and I'm going to show you the hardware and what we could done on the back of our boat. Okay guys, let's review the transom hardware on the tail of our boat. As you'll notice, I've got a nice cosmetic aluminum fitting put here for my exhaust tubing to exit the transom. I had to drill one hole in the middle, the big hole for the tube to come out through, and it had six little bolts and a plate that mounted in behind to hold it to the transom of the boat. Very nice little attractive piece. I like the look of it. Made it fit perfect, seven additional holes in the transom. This is a Speedmaster rudder assembly, and this is a Speedmaster strut assembly. And this is parts that I've told you before during this build series 
that I had in stock that I did not need to purchase for this boat. When you build this boat, it is recommended that you use a 4 inch bearing block right here. This one here is 6 inches. And guys, before anybody leaves any comments, I am going to put a 4 inch bearing block here. It's merely just going to be unbolting those two bolts, taking off that linkage, and pulling the pin right here, and installing a shorter bearing block, and putting the same direct rudder, linkage, and mount all into the same package. Guys, when it comes to the strut on this boat, this is a Speedmaster Hydro Strut. It is a flat bottom one. Right now, this strut blade is too short and it should be approximately a quarter inch more down for our stuffing tube. So and before I do use this boat, I am going to get a longer strut blade to fit in between these mounts that will give me a perfect alignment with my stuffing tube in the back of my boat. I took the time to mount my water lines and bring them up through the hull. I've noticed in prior builds with most guys they like to clamp them right here so that the water lines don't get in the way of the propeller in any way and get chopped off. I'm probably going to try and figure out some type of neat little mount that I can add right here just to hold them snug so they're not loose and flying around when this boat is running in water. So guys, it's only a bearing block change and it's only a strut blade change and we have the hardware on the back of our boat, which is Speedmaster equipment, not zip kits. All the holes are pre-drilled in this for you. And it is a very simple boat to drill easily. Just make sure you use the right size drill bits for the right size bolts in each part. Very simple and very easy to do. But like I say, this is not Zipkit's hardware, this is all Speedmaster, and it's still a direct fit for all the holes in the transom of this boat. Water lines for the boat, guys. I merely ran them in through the holes in the transom, and I used the holes that were used for alignment in building the boat up through the bulkheads as holders for my water lines coming up through the boat. Once I got to my engine, I ran two outlet fittings right here on the top edge of my deck. It would be right here on the opposite side of the boat. I have two fittings installed there, and I have both of my exit hoses returning from my cylinder head and my exhaust manifold rooted and out of the way of my exhaust and out through those two fittings. So water lines guys were very very simple to root on this boat. While I got you guys here I'd like to give you a working radio test and I have the time to do so. So if we click our Spectrum DX5 Rugged radio on and if we reach inside of our radio box and hit our switch and if we grab our radio and if we pull the trigger on our radio we should see a working throttle with full range and if I take ye guys and move ye just slightly down to the transom of the boat we should see a working rudder on the back of our boat also. So guys, as you can see, our boat has a brain, and our boat has a heart, and our boat has a water system, and our boat has most of its rigging done on the transom, and our boat has most of its exhaust work done. So once we get the few little pieces that we need to get in order to do our stuffing tube, finish our exhaust work, get our transom perfect, and hook up our fuel tank, we've got all of our rigging done with this boat. And this boat is completely assembled and disassembling, no problem at all. You can take this boat now piece for piece and take it apart and put it back together as many times as you like but you have to make everything fit perfectly. 
And as I said at the start of this video, guys, I hope you notice, I like to do things neat and tidy. It's just the way I do my work, and I can't help it. I've been taught by a lot of good mechanics and a lot of skilled guys over my life. There's not a lot of clutter inside this boat, and this is the way you should mock your boat together, and this is the way you should rig your boat, in my opinion, if you're going to do it. Take your time. Figure everything out. Think a couple steps ahead. Don't try and fit something if you don't know it's not going to work. And make sure that you plan things out. If you plan it out and you take your time and do it, you can build something neat and tidy yourself also. It's just how much pride you want to put into your work. So guys, I want to take the time and say thanks for watching the rigging episode of our Zipkit's SLR Missile. I hope you learned something from this. I hope you guys see how I take my time when I'm building a personal project like this for myself. I hope you see that I take a little bit of pride in the work I do. And I hope you notice that I've took the time to make everything fit this boat as I'm building it and slowly bring it to where it's everything fits perfectly and I'm happy with the fitment of it. Guys, when you're custom building something, you're going to have to do little things like notching wood and making things fit. It's just part of putting a custom kit like this together. And don't be afraid of it. Conquer it and take it on. But like I said, try and plan it out and think a few steps ahead. Make things fit properly. And if you do, you'll only get something that you're going to be proud of when you're finished with it. I'm here to tell you guys that we're getting close to having a built boat here and there's only five pieces of wood left to completely assemble this kit and it is done and I cannot wait to get it all conquered and I cannot wait to get it all finished and everybody's warned me that right now I'm at the hardest stage of building this boat but guys the way I see this right now is that I'm that far in that there's no looking back. There's no turning back right now. When you're this far along in a project, you got to finish it. So, here's what's going to happen. When I get these slots cleaned out, because there is some epoxy in them, and when I get all this fitment perfect the way I want it, I'm going to turn the camera on, and we're going to install the last five pieces of wood in this kit, in this boat. We're going to get it finished, and we're going to get it built. But... Like I just said, right now, five pieces of wood and installing them decks are not scaring me. The way I see it, there's no turning back right now. And the next thing that needs to happen with this boat after the decks and the exterior of it is finished, is it needs to go to water, and it needs to fire that engine up, and it needs to be thrown in a pond, and it needs to run good. And I promise you guys, unless the dear Lord takes me off this earth, before then, you guys are going to see this boat running in water. Guys, Twisted Liquid RC Boats cannot thank you enough for your channel support, for all your views, for all of your likes, and for your comments. I've told you guys I will answer any and all comments. I appreciate you guys, the viewer. You have taken my little tiny YouTube channel and you have made it into something good. And it's all because I took the time to show you how to build a boat. And I'm proud of the work I got done. And I promise you I'm going to show you how to do more things in the future. And I promise you that this channel is going to grow even more than what it is right now. So, like I say every day and every episode, thank you for watching. Thank you for your channel support. I want everyone out there to take care of yourselves because this is a really wild world we're in. And I want you to have a really good day. We'll see you all later. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please like and subscribe. Take care and stay safe.